we are now going to be looking at a situation where there are transactions between connected persons in the same group of companies. And this is discussed in section 24I10A. Now, uh, traditionally, this has not been asked too many times, but please be aware of it. So basically what happens in this case, this we should consider this section when there is a foreign debt, obviously because foreign debt has foreign exchange on it, um, between two companies that are connected persons or which form part of the same group of companies. Now, what happens if this section applies, you will have to defer the forex gain or loss until it is realized or until the provisions of the section no longer apply. Um, I.e., or example, no longer connected persons or same group of companies. So, for example, if this no longer um, applies, then it will, you will also have to not defer it. Now, when is a debt realized? A debt is realized when it is paid. So, remember, so this basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to stop a South African company and a foreign company from this South African company, because that's obviously who gets taxed, from having all sorts of gains and losses um, for a couple of years while there's a debt outstanding between them. Because they're saying if you're in the same group of companies, we don't really view it in the same way that you've really suffered a loss. You'll only suffer a loss or make a gain, that is, when it is realized eventually. So you just need to wear it out. So all the gains and losses that you would calculate, you will not calculate. So basically, um, this is how it will work. The following requirements must be met to apply this section. There must be a duet between connected persons or parties in the same group. There must be no FEC or foreign currency option contract to enter into the hedge test. And then important, the debt must not be a short-term asset or liability. Now, I'm just going to make a comment here, which you'll see when we're looking at the Act. The Act currently says no part of the asset or liability may be a short-term asset or liability. Now, you remember that short-term liabilities or assets are all those which will be paid within 12 months for financial accounting purposes. Now, what is the issue here? If you have a loan that is payable over five years. When, you're, when you've got your statement of financial position, that loan is going to have a current and a long-term portion because whatever is payable within the next 12 months will sit in current. Now, you'll see what the Act currently says. It says if anything is in current, then this section does not apply. But now, what is important, SICA, as well as your universities have indicated that this cannot be the case because then almost nothing will qualify for this section because there's always almost a current portion, very often a current portion. So basically what they've said for RTC exam pronouncements, they said they will not have this weird situation where anything is there. You will just have to assume everything is long term and they will tell you that. Okay, so I don't want you to, if you think about it, if you're smart and clever when you're looking at the act in a few seconds, that you don't start thinking that because that is currently an issue in the Act. And then they sell you should not be funded by a debt owed to a person that is not part of the same group of companies. So basically what they're trying to say here is here's the SA company, here's the foreign company, and here is Mr. X. Mr. X can't give a loan to the foreign company and the foreign company then gives it to South Africa um, because the foreign company can't be funded by this person. So there must be no external party. It must just be the two companies. Right. So here we go. It says, subject to paragraph B, no exchange differences arising from any year of assessment irrespective of an exchange item in paragraph B shall be included or deducted if at the end of that year of assessment, that person and the other party form part of the same group of companies or are connected persons in relation to each other. And no forward exchange contract or foreign currency option contract has been entered into. And that exchange item or any portion thereof does not represent a current asset or current liability for IFRS. So you can see this is the one I mentioned, this is the issue, because this or any portion thereof, basically what universities uh, on SACA are suggesting is that any portion thereof should be removed. But it's not, but for now we'll ignore it because it's an issue. And it is not directly or indirectly funded to, by any other person. 
who does not form part of the same group of companies or is not a connected person. Right, so there you can see the same rules that I've just went through with you guys. So basically what will happen now, guys, is that you will not perform any calculations of forex gains and losses. However, the moment that this debt is realized, you will calculate the exchange gain or loss as follows. You will take the amount of debt times the spot rate on the last day of the preceding year, less the spot rate on transaction date. Okay, so this is year one. This is year end for year six. And over here, this is year seven. This is where it's realized. Okay, so what I want you to see is, let's say in year one, we took out a loan. And between connected persons, a foreign debt. So there's foreign gains and losses. We pay it in year seven. Right, it's realized. So what they say is, they say, you will not calculate any gains and losses during this period. Right? Between year one and year six. But what will happen is, when it is now realized in year seven, you will calculate, you'll take the spot rate at year six minus the spot rate at year one. So I want you to understand what that means. This is the, it'll take into account all the forex gains and losses that took place. That is how you will calculate the forex gain and loss. And then, again, at year, when you realize it, you will obviously calculate another forex gain and loss from year end until the date of realization. But basically what I wanted to see, they say the first thing that you need to do is just to take into account everything that you've missed out on is recognize from year one until the end of the preceding year of assessment. Okay, so it says, we paragraph A, so we'll see it now in the act, was applied during the year to any exchange difference and that exchange difference was not included in that year and during the year of assessment, Paragraph A no longer applies. So paragraph A, I'm just reminding you, is this section. So they say if this no longer applies. Or if the item is realized. Then they say the amount in respect of that exchange item must be included or deducted from the income in that subsequent year of assessment or in the year of assessment during which the item is realized. Which shall be determined by multiplying that exchange item by the difference between the ruling exchange rate on the last day of the year of assessment, immediately preceding that subsequent year of assessment, and the ruling exchange rate on the transaction date. There's anything else that's already been recognized, but that you won't really see. So there we can go, and you can see what they are referring to. And that brings us to the end of section 24i, 10.